Hi everybody, this is Tori Cushing from Authority Labs, and today I'm just going to walk through the Excel 104 series, which is on pivot tables. So we're going to start off in the PC. If you're a Mac user, I actually have a tutorial right after this one that's going to go through how to do this on the Mac. So here is the report that you're going to learn how to create. It's a campaign report that I exported from Google Analytics and basically just going to go ahead and make a pivot table. Now I know that, that these can be intimidating and a lot of people, you know, are don't even want to touch pivot tables, but they're really, really helpful. And here's a very basic way to kind of be introduced to them. So I'm going to start in my raw data tab, like I always do. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of this data. Now you can go ahead and go all the way to the top left corner and drag it all the way down, which I'm sure a lot of you are doing, or you could go up to the top left corner again and you could hit shift scroll over, hold down control, and hit the down arrow to select all of it. Or you can even hit control A once and it'll select all of this data. So those are some cool keyboard shortcuts. I highly suggest you use them, learn them, love them. They are very helpful and help you move more quickly through the data. So next, now after I've selected my data, I'm gonna go up into insert. And I'm gonna go to pivot table, which is right over here in the left hand corner. And it's gonna say, okay, do you want this data? And it's like, oh yes, yes I do, Excel, thank you. And it's gonna take me over to a new tab. So that actually helps a lot. I like using a new sheet. Um, you know, it automatically does that. You have an option to not do that. So if you wanted to add it to the same sheet that you've been working on, you can go ahead and deselect that little checkbox and it'll do that for you. Okay, so now that we're in the pivot table, we just have to drag these fields over here to the right. And I apologize for any slushing. I'm actually getting braces. <laughs> so I have this expander in my mouth and it's making everything sound a little weird. So excuse the accent, it's new. So I'm going to start with medium because that's the value that I'm going to be filtering by. And I always kind of start from left and then kind of work my way over to the right. So I'm going to grab medium and I can either check it and it goes into a row automatically or I can go ahead and drag it into the box that I would like to, the four square box is what I call these. Uh, so I'm going to start with medium because that's the value that I'm going to be filtering by. Next I'm going to go to the rows value and I'm going to hit the campaign. So these are all my campaigns, you know, all the Authority Labs campaigns, and those are just my rows. So I know that this is starting to get a little confusing. Honestly, the best way that I learned how to use pivot tables was just grabbing the data and putting it and kind of just dragging and dropping it into different areas until I'm like, hey, that's what I want. <laughs> so I would suggest this is how you start off. You know, I'm gonna give you this worksheet so you can go ahead and try it on your own and just kind of mess around with it. You know, I kind of use the whole um, Miss Frizz, you know, make mistakes, get messy, that whole thing. So next what I'm gonna do is grab all signups, which are my completions, and another all signups, which are my conversion rates. And I'm going to put those into the values. So those are just the values that are assigned to these rows. So you can see that the rows and the values are right across from each other in my little four square box. And the rows and the values are right across from each other on my table. So that's pretty intuitive. And the filter and the columns are both going vertically. So um, you have the filters, which is by me medium, and you have the columns, which are both you know, up and down. So that's basically it for how to create a pivot table. It is that simple. Really just drag in the values that you want to filter by and where you want them to have, um, you know, be laid out. And then you can go ahead and start working on making it pretty. So to do that, I'm going to start by going up into the design tab and I'm going to select the orange because that's my branded color. Next what I'm going to do is go over to view and I'm going to get rid of those grid lines because that is so important. I'm going to add in a few rows of buffer on the top to put in my header and I'm going to add in a little bit of buffer to the left because that's a personal choice and I kind of like the way it looks. Okay, so I'm going to also make this column just a little bit smaller. It automatically goes that size because I have this really long title up in here, like really long, wicked long. And the reason for that is in my raw data tab, I have this column that's labeled all signups goal seven conversion rate it's a very long title but you know it's my raw data tab it's supposed to be ugly data anyway 
if I were to keep the original column title, so if I wanted to keep this, this, you know, let's say this wasn't super long and it just said all signups and I wanted to keep that same title, I wouldn't be able to. And this was very frustrating to me when I first started learning pivot tables because I wanted to delete the sum of because I'm like, that's stupid. And I was like, okay. And then it's like the pivot table name already exists. I'm like that's ridiculous. So it's very frustrating at first. The reason for that is that this pivot table is referencing that data. So it's referencing the data in the raw data tab, which is another reason why you don't want to ever touch your raw data tab. Just leave it be. Because once you start getting into more complicated things like formulas, pivot tables, VLOOKUPs, you want to keep that data kind of virgin in a way, <laughs> untouched. So to get around this as kind of like a hack, and Annie Cushing came up with this if you haven't looked at her tutorials. She's wonderful. Annie Analytics. You can go ahead and just put in a space, literally one space, like space bar hit after it, and you can keep that original title. How super cool is that? It's an awesome hack. I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I don't really want all that craziness, and I'm just going to keep the conversion rate. I'm going to do that over here, too. You really want to work on keeping your column headers as concise as possible and clear. You know, concise, clear data is really pretty data, so you want to make sure that that happens. I'm going to also going to go ahead and change the row labels over here to campaign. Okay, so now I have all of this beautiful data in this beautiful setup. I'm actually going to go ahead and change this to this one because I like it better, but you know, it's totally up to you. You can go ahead and filter now by your mediums, which is super cool. So I can go ahead and select, well, let's say I want email, and I can go ahead and say okay. And then here are all my email campaigns, my conversion rates for them, my completions for them, everything that I need. Um, I can also select all. If you want to select multiple items, you just go ahead and click this checkbox. And I can say that I want, let's say, my social and my Twitter. There we go. So now you can filter by all of them. It's super awesome. Go ahead and actually um, change the formatting on the conversion rate. Go ahead and change that to percentage because that was a little ridiculous. Okay, so yeah, the last thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is just put in the title. I'm just gonna copy this over because I'm lazy. And I copy it. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to something intuitive, you know, usually. I have better names, but yeah. So lastly, I would say that you would really want to add in a little bit of instruction because somebody like a CEO who's trying to go through your report doesn't necessarily want to learn how to use Excel really well. So having in a little bit of like a comment box, I wrote a whole blog post on annotating in the last Excel 103 series. Um, so if you want to annotate your data, I just threw this in on top of here. But you could also put in a call out, um, put in a comment, but let them know that if they want to filter by medium, they're going to have to select this box right here. So select the draw down, drop down to view different mediums. Ta-da! And that is how to create an intuitive pivot table report. Stay tuned for the Mac version if you want to learn that too. Hey everyone, this is Tori Cushing with Authority Labs, and today I'm just going to go through how to add in the pivot table with the Mac. So this is a whole new feature for me. I've never done Mac tutorials before, but I figured it's time to try it out and show you guys how to do it because it gets a little bit more complicated on the Mac. Or not more complicated, but definitely a different, different way to approach it. So I'm gonna start in my raw data tab, just like I did with the PC tutorial. And I'm gonna hit Command A to select all of the data. Then I'm going to go over to the Tables tab, and I'm going to add in a table. I'm just going to add an orange table. Then I'm going to go over to the Tools and click the Summarize with Pivot Table option. Okay, and it says the location is Table 2. You can see this is Table 2 up here in the corner. So I'm just going to hit OK. And it's said to add it to a new sheet, which is good because I want to keep my raw data tab, you know, raw data. So next we're going to put in the different fields into the different filters in the different areas. Okay, so I'm going to start with medium and I'm going to go ahead and put that under the report filter. So you can do this by just selecting it and 
dragging it into the report filter option. That way you can go ahead and filter this entire campaign report by medium. So next I'm going to go ahead and grab campaign and I'm going to put that under row values. So I just go ahead and select it and drag it down. Next I'm going to put in the column rows. So you can see here how like this report is starting to come together. A lot of times when I first started working with pivot tables, I honestly just started messing around with the data and just dragging it into different areas. And sometimes I still kind of do that, but there is a logic behind this. And that the columns, I'm going to go ahead and put in, or I'm going to go ahead and put in the values, which will be all signups. And then it'll automatically give me the column values. So it's going to go ahead and put both of these into the columns. So you can say that your values are the numbers that you want to look at. And I can see that this is my conversion rate and my goal completions. So I want those both as my values because those are the metrics that I'm actually going to be looking at. The row labels, well, there are, they're for the campaign because those are what I'm kind of showing each of the values for. And then the medium up here at the top is what I'm going to filter by. So I can go ahead and select this and say that I want just email. I mean, right now it's showing everything, but I can say that I want email, Facebook, PPC, whatever I want. Okay, so then you can go ahead and exit out of the, the pivot table builder. And I'm going to go ahead and style this in orange because that's my brand color. And I'm going to go over to layout and get rid of these grid lines because they are ugly. You can see that that's in a different place than in the um, PC version. So Mac users, you have a little bit of a learning curve just because I think Microsoft doesn't like you very much. It's not my fault, I'm just trying to help you out. So yeah, after this you can just add in any headers or anything like that that you want to save for your report. So I can go ahead and put in some campaign report. And just bring up this just a little bit, maybe bold it. And then I usually like to put the date range. So I'm going to put January to June 2014. It's kind of a personal thing. Okay, so last thing is you can see that these values are really long and these labels aren't very intuitive. Now, see, it's grabbing it. This pivot table is grabbing the data from your raw data tab, so you can't have the same labels as your raw data tab. So if I wanted to have it say all signups, you know, have my original title, it's going to give me an error message because it says that that field name already exists. So you have a trick, and Annie Cushing actually came up with this. Brilliant. You just put in a space after. That's all you need to do and then you can have your original title. So that's really helpful for when I'm over here and I want to put in, you know, campaigns. And then if I wanted to change this, I'm actually going to go ahead and change this just to conversion rate. And these two completions. Just because it's really good best practice to keep your headers as as con I, I, I guess as concise as possible because it just gets kind of convoluted if you have like these really long headers it can be kind of complicated but yeah so if you want to edit anything in your pivot table you can go back up here to your builder under the pivot table tab and open that back up go ahead and exit that out and then you can go ahead and filter Ta -da! and it automatically updates another cool thing about pivot tables is that it automatically gets rid of the duplicates in your data. So that's really cool. But yeah, thank you for watching. This is the Mac tutorial for Excel 104, Tori Cushing's tutorial, the Rick Labs. Thank you.